And with that, it's going to be Turtle Troop to be kicking off the series with a win 13 to 8 over Blin. Dan, considering this was Blin and really like they're diving into this challenger scenes they're going up against a really formidable opponent this was a great score line but turtle troop just had the upper hand yeah to be honest we didn't really know what was going to happen on this match we talked about the deadlock and the cypher we talked about this composition we also talked about the sub that is playing right now for turtle troop there were there were a lot of factors to question and see how they were gonna uh, resolve as we went into this map and it was a turtle troop they answered it in the best way possible a team that looked clean they had a lot a lot of unique ideas around this composition that i i know we're gonna dive into a little bit later but it's just uh, i think the team that we expected it to be even with a sub for silent x he really stepped up on this omen even having to fail he was getting his kills he was supporting the team just everything and more than the team could have asked for it's nice to see Turtle Troop coming out here in the form that they are as well, because when we're looking at the teams that got the buy, you got to see a little bit of rust coming out from a couple of the teams. But Turtle Troop, they're being talked about a lot in here, Gomps, and for good reason, too. And it was nice to see a sub did not slow it down. Yeah, it was nice to see that the composition worked as well. I honestly found that it was more effective for the way that Turtle Troop wanted to play. And I really liked the diversity, like Cypher, Cam, and Mid instead of the typical Killjoy, um, you know, alarm bot that you would see in order to give you that information. And then it also kind of gave people, um, you got a lot more out of it. Instead of somebody shooting it, you got to see how far pushed up these players really were, what they were aiming for. And I felt like it was way, way more solidified in terms of information, you know, what they were aiming for. And the holds were tremendous, especially as you saw Blin attempting to go down towards Tree. And it really did stop a lot of the aggressive pushes that they wanted to do, but in, they just really couldn't follow through with. So I got to give it to them. I loved the deadlock on this map. Oh, oh wow. I, I know, for Gompers, the 180, like that. Dude, that. No, no, I, I, I want to make sure while we can look at this head-to-head -head as well, MVP's coming out on both ends. I mean, we're talking about Blin. We got to see a huge step up here, Dan, from Okeano, someone who we talked about in this pre-show, and Mikey as well. I mean, for Blin, this is a big step up from two players. Okeano did really, really good. He was pretty much fighting demons in some of those rounds, trying to close them out, trying to get the opening. And it, it seems like everything was happening around him. We see a round where he gets slowed down by, by the sound barrier. He's, he's pretty much crouched as the ability does, and he still manages to get the pick, expects the swing, and it's a lot of those reads that he was trying to have. He he looks so natural on the jet, and it's a role that he's been having for quite some time with Blin. Uh, and this is the way that they've been getting the wins. This is the way that they made it through that promotion motion it just uh very very clean but unfortunately for him and for the rest of the squad it wasn't enough on that map it's another clean performance we have to talk about as well and going back to turtle troop to have to talk about the sub situation and silence being brought in for this match because it's always a little bit scary right the mid-season cup this is single elimination not sure exactly what's going to be happening here Enemy but remaining. honestly gobs he stepped up even clutching out some rounds dude i don't even like <laughs> There were a lot of moments where I really didn't think it was going to work out for for anyone, to be honest with you. I think TTR just overall had the best aim out of anything. And they managed to win a ton of these fights. Silence being one of the main players who were able to pull through with clutches like these. And it, it wasn't about the aim at that point. It was about just, just the result, right? The, the capability and, and keeping themselves level-headed in a moment where you really should be panicking. <laughs> but that's, that's the thing. Turtle Troop is just a team where they can keep that level-headedness and then go into it 10 times, 10-fold, and get that 13 um point win so oh, i i do i do give them kudos for that i mean at this point too turtle troops a team that's been around these players they definitely have that prestige and the experience here then and they obviously are putting the time in with the server and the other things they have cooking up here dan because we have to talk about that deadlock once again especially for the deadlock geeks out there because what adder was showing off here was amazing I love how you say the lock geeks. There's like three of them and they're freaking out. <laughs> Wyatt is one of them. He's freaking out. <laughs> but we all are though for good reason. The lineups 
insane. I mean, I don't know how much time he was spending on the server trying to find out where these lineups are and the way that he was even using this ultimate but combining it with somebody else. Just uh, having that extra support, that extra layer that I love to see. One of the one of the things that the challengers players have been talking about is that sometimes we just don't get creative enough. Everybody's running what Fnatic's running. Everybody's running what Energy is running. Everybody's running the same compositions, not really thinking about what helps out the team what gets you the win and, and going and thinking outside of the box and this is a turtle troop that really does and it's so so fun to watch i i love it and even just look i don't know i i hate playing up against deadlock but being able to see the creativity that adder had here was absolutely fantastic i'm curious what turtle troop have up their sleeve heading on in the series though because the next map this one's gonna be Blinn's choice. And when we're looking at this next map of split gobs, this is something we actually haven't seen from Turtle Troop this year. Uh, they've been banning it out either first or second pick. So it hasn't even been something that, hey, it hasn't happened. Like they have not wanted to go here. And I don't blame them. Uh, listen, for split, it's... <sighs> You can't play deadlock here. I'm kidding. <laughs> so first split, <laughs> first split for not having split inside of your arsenal. I definitely do think it is a little bit concerning for Turtle Troop. But I will say it, it was the same thing, you know, with locking in Breeze for M80 and, and stuff like that. So they, at the end of the day, they still managed to put up a hell of a fight. We don't really know what Turtle Troop is cooking. And I think overall, I've said this before, I think that's dangerous too. What I'm thinking about right now is that because we haven't seen Turtle Troop play this map, I wonder how this is going to play out with that sub again, which uh, playing the Omen on Ascent, pretty standard, pretty easy, just trying to fill out that controller role. But before, last time that we got to see them on November when they were playing this map was split, they were playing this double controller with the Astros, something that we've seen some teams play, some teams uh, try to avoid instead of going with the Omen. So uh, I want to see if they're going to continue playing with this Astra, if they're going to bring something else, and if that something else is going to be what they've been preparing or just the adaptation that they have to do for today no more speculation we head into our agent select blend has played this quite recently this is also where they took a win over sad so i'm not going to expect to see a switch on their end but dan here we are the turtle troop lock-in they have this composition again with the Astra, but the Astra is going to be that solo controller. They used to play with the Viper instead, and of course, this Gecko is a new addition as well. It's a couple changes here with that initiator, which I'm the most interested on. I want to see. I feel like we haven't seen enough of this Gecko implementation on Split. Uh, we've seen it a lot on Vine, we've seen it a lot on Lotus, but I feel like on Split, with the team as creative as Star Troop, we might be setting out ourselves for a really, really good map from them <laughs> i i'm excited to see how this one's going to play out and what turtle troop has in store i'm also excited to see if blin can be taking us to a map three here of course elimination on the line for them it's time to head over to split and head on over to wyatt and uber thank you very much gang yeah interesting asian select here like we've seen the astro from a couple teams hundred thieves in america's like to play that but it's only a single controller composition it's not often yeah. that we really see these viperless comps on split these days. Instead, they're opting for double initiator. When I saw the Gecko and the Astra, I immediately jumped to, oh, they're doing the 100 Thieves thing. Oh, but no, they're not. They're running the Cypher, which they do love. And also, I love the Cypher. And I love the Cypher on split. Yeah, it is incredible right now in a very Cypher-dominant meta. And then also, instead of the fade to continue the comparison to 100 Thieves, where EU plays that agent, they have Stellar on the sky instead. So, you know, reminiscent, an ode to 100 Thieves, which is only right since that's Stellar's previous roster. That's but right. and now uh, a bit of their own twist on it. Silence so was on that roster too at some point. <laughs> yeah, he was their sub as well. Yeah. I was hoping for the deadlock though, I'm gonna be real, but that's okay. That's okay. But it would have been fun. <laughs> well, yeah, we it, it's we can hope, we can hope for that, but can't guarantee it. Blim with the standard composition. So I'm curious to see how this plays out. Anna uh, is very, very good at looking those sites down solo. Spazz, okay, with the help of Herkianos, wins out their final ramp against Corey. That's the only presence the Turtle Troop wanted to show on that side of the map, though. Spaz is looking for some pistol round redemption based on 
the incident from last map, <laughs> which we will we'll forget about that one as soon as we delete the VOD. <laughs> but they've started with that man advantage. Mike has that annoying one way to deal with. Excited to see more of him on this map as well, given how standout he was for Blin on Ascent, getting 20 plus kills on the KJ. Yeah, that was impressive. Two players topping the server on the losing team by a large margin losing team. Great to see individual standouts there. Time is ticking down. We're going to have Astra Smoke towards the ropes here, and the Trailblazer will force Spaz back, but they're able to play from behind this Poison Orb. So, Blin under no more pressure than they were earlier. Turtle Troop slowly encroached now, trying to come through B main. Monzi gives as good as he gets at the very least here. There is a trip back there, but the spam is dangerous. Coming into the back of the site. Spaz, not ready for that one, but Okeanos is good for three. Adder eventually able to bring them down, but it's a 1v3. Adder has to make the most of this. That's a tall order indeed. Blin, take the pistol. They were unwavering, anchoring the B site there, Blin. Turtle Troop tried to cut noise, work off of it. Get into position for a split with that dog from Stellar running up mail to clear some space while the other two Turtle Shrew members worked B main. But Blin, they were steadfast in the site. So they're going to take the lead here on their map pick, a map where they've been pretty dominant. They beat Sad on it. They beat Winthrop on it as well, I believe. Resonate a bunch of teams on their way to actually qualifying here for challengers in the midseason tournament and stage two. I would suggest that Turtle Troop haven't shown this map because they haven't had to play it. They've only had to play a small handful of maps and challenges so far. Well, the sure is no hell, the sure as hell not playing any Valorant this round. Spray down there from Rafters a little too much. Pretty robust buy in by Blin for the second round, in fairness. Okeanos went as far as to go for a phantom off the bat. B-Dog is heading out of here with his tail between his legs. Yeah, my man Bryson Dog is on the run. <laughs> Blind have not taken a single point of damage. <laughs> so they might be able to carry every little piece of every armor that they have into the next round. Now, this is That's optimal gameplay, Mitch. This is yeah, optimal this is like gameplay. The, the mythical full <laughs> flawless. He ran all the way to B just to get the orb. I, honestly, I focused. respect that hustle. I, I, respect I that do hustle. too. That's called I mogul moves. <laughs> <laughs> just getting every little drop of a potential advantage they can find. Bro, if you aren't grinding every second of your life, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, B-Dog's actually got a lot of orbs now too. Yeah. That guy wakes up at 4 a.m., drinks yeah. his grapefruit juice, and is ready for market open. Yeah. Like Cold shower. That's it. Yeah, exactly. He is on top of it. Let's see now, Turtle Troop with actual weapons. What can they do here? Blin have showed a pretty solid defense so far, but this is where he truly gets put to the test. It's going to be everyone over towards ramps here. Chance, of course, for Corey to play ahead of it with a double satchel. Okeanos wants to scout this out early. Oh, too good for B-Dog. He will go out with a whimper there. And Turtle Troop now going to have to back away. Silence consulting the astral deities for advice, but they are silent. You know, it was so close to getting his thrash as well. So that's a big kill in that regard, too. There was potential yeah. for that to be used, and it's off the table. Instead, he got his booty thrashed. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's like that. Uh, to be fair, <laughs> that's tough. Tough, tough yeah. Tough. <laughs> that is some rough stuff. Difficult situation to play from, but Okeanos is really staking their claim here to this ramp position. They see Corey go overhead, they can call it out. Spaz is going to come in for a trade with a stinger. Absolutely worth it. Blinder doing very, very well with his bonus round so far. Okeanos! Always hard to shift. Good damage on Silenx, down to two. That means the Teague just needs to breathe on him to get rid of him. Doesn't even he doesn't even need to eat garlic beforehand. Three to zero for Blin. Fantastic start. They recover a vandal from that as well. Economy is absolutely rolling given their anti eco was flawless entirely. And look at this. I mean, just yeah, look at the state that they're in right now. They've already got three players of 4K plus. Turtle Troop relegated to five sheriffs. It's looking like we honestly, I mean, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but a win on this map from Blin here 
would be huge and it would be such a testament to the improvement that they've made being able to actually qualify for the league this time around split is that kind of map though we saw thinking men do this to oxygen you remember that game they absolutely yeah. fresh them on split just had a better idea for it and gave nothing away on defense which is very much what we're seeing for blint and they're playing blint are playing more aggressively especially over towards ramp then a lot of teams that we've seen on this map that filled with confidence. Great to see from a, you know, an underdog team in this situation. Okay, we saw Nova Pulse there as Mike was able to step away from it. Trailblazer sees very little. Spike did at least get planted here, but Okeanos just does what he pleases. This guy is so confident. It's crazy. Goodbye. Great shot from Stellar. This is planted actually just out of the way for B main. Not ideal. The wingman wasn't in the proper position. Yeah, Silence is in trouble. How much you can do about that would have to really peek around to be able to interrupt this defuse. Four in a row. Turtle Troop now able to go back to a gun round. And I wonder if there's even a consideration of a potential timeout here to make sure their plan is watertight. Listen, you hate to blame little bro. He's just a little yep. guy trying to plant the spike. Don't like blaming him. But he could have put it to the left just a little bit. That would have helped out. <laughs> so they could have gotten a better angle from B-Main, but you know, it happens. It happens. Yeah, you're right. This timeout has been called now from Turtle Troop. As they're down 4-0, they got bonus. It's going to be their second opportunity now for a full buy. And something you pointed out there, you're, you're totally right. The A-Main control has been so favored towards Blin. They are aggressively fighting for that area of the map and the little bit that when they do give it up just that area around the orb they're ready to double swing from a player on ramp from players from site sky flash is coming in it's put turtle troop in this really tough position there they haven't been able to break out of that little entrapment that blin have them in Turtle Troop making full use of this, this timeout here. Corey Quiet so far has been trying to take a lot of those challenges, be the tip of the spear at A. The chips have just not fallen in his favor. This is a nice spot. The confidence for Okeanos has been undeniable. Who... Okay, we'll get a gun bought for them. At the very least here. A lot of money to work with for Blin, of course. No issues there. This time, though, B-Main Control might be on the docket. B-Dog just swings it. Contact to maintain this part of the map. So B-Main controlled, and they're just going to leave the Cypher to watch a pretty standard 1-3-1 one, one here. Early thrash, and it actually catches Okeanos. He was way too far forward. I've got your train. Was Okeanos... They were using Showstopper. They got interrupted mid-ultimate, I think. So that thrash would have been devastating for them anyway. Oh, this has gone horribly wrong. The detain came in. Okeanos had no way of getting help there. Now it's up to Teague and Mike on the wrong side of the map. Plenty of money, so they can definitely go for this. But this is a grim situation. As Thrash is going to make a repeat appearance. And if they do deal any damage, it is pretty relevant to Turtle Troop right now. They are all very low on money. Oh, what is that? I mean, how does ah, okay. he get that? That simply should not be happening, but that's fine. Adder is a little too smooth with it. That was a cool execute out of the timeout, though, from Turtle Troop. Using that thrash to go through B main while the rest of the players fight through mid, try and split through mail. And then they would have had Adder for a late reflank coming through mid into mail as well. So just calling kind of a, a, a big set piece out of the timeout to get their first round on the board here. I do want to see that thrash again, hopefully. I mean, see if you're right. I mean, yeah, just... I think, yeah, you are. Okay, honestly, he popped it. And then just as it went off, he got hit by the thrash. So his ult is gone as well. That's crazy. That is so brutal. Two birds, one stone. And as soon as B-Dog gets that kill, he knows, okay, I can actually just push this now, especially with that heaven control established for my team. The timing worked out really well there for Turtle Troop. It's a hard board. First round on the attacking side on this map, but they are on the board. The issue is, Blin still have a lot to work with. Okiano's trying to play around a contact into B-Main, just like we saw last round. This time, though, they've flashed off the angle. And the Trailblazer now to come in. We're hoping to clear that trip. It doesn't get deep enough to do so. 
really heavy pressure early towards B, and I was looking at the map to see if maybe Adder was trying to work off that at A, and it looks like he is, but he's getting re-cleared by the dog. So that's really heads up from Blin to try and garner some info on that side of the map at the same time. Big first engagement. Both fall away alive. And Adder do not want to give up too much of that ground either. Up goes Corey. For the first time this match, Turtle Troop had this ramp control and Adder wins out against Teague. That was just an A main pick that eventually gets traded off. But it favors the attackers in numbers. But they're drifting across the map now. I think that has been heard though. That's been noted by Monty in ropes. There were footsteps heading over towards his B site. But is Okeanos going to be ready for the low angle? Now, I might caught there. I don't know well, really what the plan was supposed to be for B Dog, I think. At heaven at left. hell, rather. Now, Turtle Troop have kind of run out of gas. A bit of an awkward round for them here. It really just all came down to those players trying to catch Okeanos, but he's just too good with this operator. Nice trade from Stellar, but with 22 HP. He's so low. Yeah, that was almost a collapse, to be fair, for, for Stellar. Or rather, for the operator shot. And that would have been... It would have meant that Stellar would have had no opportunity to try and salvage the round. It wouldn't have found that extra kill. Either way, Turtle Troops on the attacking side. I think it's something that we ought to scrutinize a bit here, Wyatt. Wow, because nice the ideas seem to be there, the execution is definitely lacking. Yeah. Especially moments like that where it looked like they'd have some real run on the A side. That was incredibly disconnected. Here. Just thinking they could, I don't know, find some time to get to B with the other players rotating spawn. It just didn't work out. But now they're fully gathered up A here. And it looks like they're just going to walk forward and go into a pretty explosive hit. Looks like an elbow lineup potentially. See where that ends up going. Maybe on site. Straight away. Corey's gotten onto this A site. There it is. Oh, T couldn't go with it elbow because that was where the mosh pit was. What a set play. All right. Still having control though for the defenders. Eventually that smoke is going to dissipate, but Stella spots a player up ramp. Monzi quite far forward. Turtle Troop going to play back now. Give Monzi enough rope to hang themselves with. The other player in heaven, one in screens here for Blin. All of those avenues watched pretty closely. And it'll have to be Okeanos to make something happen here. He does pick up a rifle. They're running out of time. They have none. They really probably just need to call a cancel on this. They don't look like they're about to make anything happen. Mike finds one from screens, but that's done. And there was a case to be made for a three gun save there, I think, for Blin. Well, they've got a bit of money still to work with, at least. They'll have enough to get the art back as well if they wanted to get that, but looks like that won't be the case. Okeanos is just going to go for the rifle here. So far, what we've seen from Turtle Troop are some good set pieces that split into view with the Thrash. This big A hit with that Gecko utility really finding a lot of value to disrupt the sight anchors. But it's been the slower paced rounds where they're struggling to flow. And I feel like a lot of that is coming down to the lack of Viper. There's no wall to play off of. So Blin are able to easily retain a lot of information just by jiggle peeking, holding angles for each other. That wall isn't coming up to give false information, make them ever think that someone could be pushed up somewhere. Okay, slow A ramp push here. Again, Spaz was pretty far forward, but will be forced back. Joe Stopper might make this even more of an untenable decision to maintain presence there. Awkward for Stella, had to make a last minute correction. Corey taking the Joe Stopper wherever, almost to his own face there. So he gets heaven control off of it though. That's how the chips fall. And here's the plan. It's gonna be planted for heaven and Turtle Trooper trying to stack up there right now. You are divided! Okay, Cosmic Divide just as it came up. I had a... Oh, buddy. Better lucky than good sometimes. Fun, B-Dog here with the wingman can interrupt this push out. The timing's perfect. Everyone gets spewed on. But Mike's able to win it out against Ada. B-Dog tries to catch an off timing by going over this molly. Almost gets a better of Okeanos, but he's just better on the gunplay. It's all up to Corey now. He gets lit. Another awkward one for Turtle Troop. They have such a huge advantage in the post plant. And they just self-destruct. I don't think they put enough emphasis on retaining heaven control there. It was planted for them. You know, one of the 
kind of keys to often winning these A rounds when you have the Gecko is using that Wingman to plant for Heaven while you push through Heaven and keep it. But they had two players there, kind of fell back, tried to rotate back in with two players, Adder dropped off. I would have liked to have just seen a more emphasis of retaining that space and having okay. several players fighting from there. Not just trying to hold on to the site. At the very least for Turtle Troop, they're going to be able to buy up here again, though it will be their last one if they lose this round. Ooh. Stellar, are you kidding Nice pit, bro! Random wall bang. And that is devastating. Blin hoping to utterly deny mid because of their Viper's pit. Now they've got to commit actual plays in that position. Okiatos, though, found Corey. It ends up being a trade. Stellar has been... I'm not going to do it. He's been great this round. <laughs> Thank you. He Thank has you been so great. Much. I just, I can't. The, uh, the fruit is the hanger too low. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that... Too often the, the fruit by the, is in the ground. The yeah, fruit is six feet under. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's practically germinating again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's Thrash. Brought down by a player in heaven, which B-Dog can definitely surmise. Spaz loses out to pick his advantage there. Silence just a little quicker on the trigger finger. And Ada gets in. Oh, spots the trip. Nicely done. Hitting in the screens would be monumental for Turtle Troop. T just waiting for a timing with that flash, trying to be the hero. Ada is good from that position. They're not ready for the refrag. And Silence helps out his old buddy. Nicely done for Turtle Troop. A bizarre turn of events where really individual brilliance lit the way for them in that round. It definitely helps when your player with a Guardian immediately spams down the Viper that's in a pit that's hiding behind a wall. That'll definitely help. I mean, Stellar just, you know, kind of... Pretty nice. Kind of nice, yeah. Just, uh... Letting Jesus take the mouse there for a second. <laughs> Just <laughs> taking control. Fortunate for him. And it looks like we're going to get another big set piece from Turtle Troop. This is where they found their success so far. The trip, though, is in the... Oh, okay. It's in a... an easy to clear spot. Camera, though. Reveals probably more than one player there. They're going to have to go for it. Trip does catch Corey briefly. That's going to be shrugged off. Wingman going to work here. Some spray down from heaven won't be enough to stop it. Remember, this is a save round here for Blin. Or rather, a little dirty eco. And Spats will have no way to make use of this judge. So that'll be basically him being shut down. And they've cut off the players in B main here on the side of Turtle Troop. They may try and get ahead of that smoke. Out of paranoia. Cyber Cage is going to be cleared in just a moment. Corey also flashed out. And then, as the smoke starts to clear, the flashes start to expire. Turtle Troop able to hold their ground. It's just Teague. My buddy. Not really enough economic damage Ready. done by Blin to give Turtle Troop any concerns. Well done from Turtle Troop. Just fighting together. Taking the right peaks against the players with the worst guns. And swinging off of each other well. Making it look oh, this is a nice spot. oh so simple. This goes here. And despite that being against the weaker guns, I can't help but just continue to draw attention to the fact that these big set executes that they've got cooked up with this comp are working extremely well. It's just the lack of Viper, I think, hurts them in the slow rounds and the mid rounds. But all of that big initiator utility is extremely effective when they're hitting a site like that. The lack of Viper also makes it hard for them to get this ramp control easily, right? They have to fight, like, it allows Blin to fight forward on ramp without being cut off by a wall. Corey? Teague there stands and delivers. Not a lick of damage taken. Again, more proactive defense here from Blin. I'd like to see this from them. Oh, I love this from them. And if Turtle Troop can't get a, a handle on this kind of tempo from the defenders, they're going to have no more than four rounds from this half. One enemy remaining. Wingman's trying his best. Ah, oh, poor little guy. <laughs> almost, almost had it for them. You are. It's giving very um, Riot Arena crowd right now. It, it really it's is. simping. <laughs> I, I, I mean, <laughs> you're right. Slicky somewhere is like, okay, something's wrong. Something is off in the celestial balance. I've spent Known... too much time in the VCT America's studio this year. That's right. Just infused with this, with this love of thirty seconds left. Those deployables of Gecko. I'm telling Sliggy, he's gonna let you know. And it's, it's just the same issue for Turtle Troop over on A that it's been on multiple rounds now. When they're slowing things down there, 
trying to push towards ramp. They're just getting swung on from the Blin players from both top ramp, top and ramp, excuse left. me, and front sight. They're walking into a crossfire every single time. Slow. Too many angles to watch. And I, I guess it, it kind of circles back to the lack of Viper, right? Because Last you can throw that Lurk wall to B to let you cut off some of those angles, right? Give you like a, you know, just a one-to-one -one fight with the player at backside. Or let you up on ramp and sort of deny this kind of play, right? The defender has to yeah. play ahead of the Viper wall, which is pretty risky for them. Doesn't give them a great fallback position or the ability to trade with another from, from heaven. So, so the troop suffering, I guess, now is the defenders can be a bit more cocky with that right one less controller at play. And they've gone back to all reliable. Just a big execute for A right now. Probably that Mosh and the Dizzy going to come over top for sight. They're going to quickly realize no one is actually anchoring in here. It's going to be a full retake. T does have the Seekers available for it. Teague about to be busier than a one-legged man in a butt-kicking competition. <laughs> and, and he does it again. I, I promise you to come out. <laughs> there it is. That ramp control again. Still being fought for. This time Thrash trying to give Turtle Troop an advantage here. But it's traded at best because Teague chooses that moment to emerge. They've overloaded ramp with three players. Blin really have a good idea about how to set up six staging grounds for these retakes. Make Turtle Troop really uncomfortable. But Lukianos is kind of clean with it. That was icy. Nice little swing there on B Dog. Player Two stayed. players left. Spaz is a little bit quicker as well with that swing. It's all up to Ada. Blin, great half. Eight rounds on defense. That's honest work. Absolutely. They felt very in control the entire time. Those Turtle Troop rounds were coming few and far between. They weren't really able to string anything together, so their economy never got into a particularly good position. Okeanos took the game over 15 and 8 for him. The Turtle Troop player is not off to a hot individual start outside of oh, Stellar to some extent. Some of it coming from that round where he was just getting random Guardian shots through a wall. We'll see if they fare better here on defense, though. You're going to have that Astra anchoring B. Again, to go back to 100 Thieves, it is Shades of Cryo, where he'll always be positioned on that site. Though he will have a Cypher to play with. So there's going to be a trip to play off of. Yeah, a little bit of supportive utility and a trip in mid as well for Turtle Troop to continue to gain some passive info here. Baz will be spotted here on ramp forced back by the Trailblazer. So that will have to be space that is re-cleared. And frankly, Lin don't really have the util for it. So they'll back away. They definitely don't have the sky over there and they only have smokes and a paranoia. So Overload Heaven seems to be the plan. Addo felled instantly. Now it's that solo Astra anchoring the site. Silence has a ghost at the very least, but gonna stroll the timing, excuse me. I digress, the timing from Corey. Could have found a freebie here. Okeanos looked like they were ready for it. Silex can't trade off that because they're too, obs I guess, obsessed with this action from B main. And for a good reason, of course. They let players through B main. The round is all but over. May already be. Okeanos, with just a sliver of health, is able to turn that into yet another kill. And that is a, a second pistol on this map, one for Blin. Things are looking pretty bad for Tilt Troop. Okeanos is blowing me away today. This guy is the real deal. No HP. That jiggle, instant headshot, that goes there. That is a high impact kill, a crucial kill to win the round. That is ridiculous. I mean, are you joking? With 11 HP, if he goes down there, Blin definitely lose that pistol. And now they're in prime position to close this game out. Cage, cage triggered. All right, both cages thrown up there on that A side, but they are not used. Turtle, Troop, not sure really if there's any been any big attempt to take ramp control, but they're not convinced. This Blin have definitely trended away from that A site into a mid that is basically not held at all by the defenders. They're all playing this heaven. Trying to trade off of each other now, of course, with these much weaker weapons. No point playing out in the open. Rokianos, straight behind the Trailblazers, able to find Adder again, the first kill found in that heaven point. It is, of course, the Cypher once more. Okeanos with three here. Patting those stats. Gotta respect it. That's a Sigma grind set now. Remaining. At work. And it's just going to be B-Dog with, with a dizzy. 
Fast will be waiting for him down there in heaven, dragging him to the seventh circle. And Blin get themselves that second round of the half pretty comfortably here. Turtle Troop are running out of time. Padding those stats, and he's almost got the showstopper already. What is it? He only needs one orb, and he's going to have it into this round to potentially bonus Turtle Troop and just get them the hell out of split and bring us to map three bind. This is a stunning performance from Blin up against... One of the best teams and challengers, easily in the top four, debatable top three, top two, if you want to go back and forth and argue about what happened in the regular season. And they're go they're losing right now 10-4 to a collegiate Valorant team. Yeah. It is a new era of challengers here. Right point. But we are dealing with, you know, I think they might be the best in collegiate. That's not there to be decided, but they're the top eight at the very least. Okiano is just playing with... Yeah, such confidence here. Oh. It's impressive because... I, I, okay, well, hey, that's fine. He's still up a player. Takes himself down with that showstopper. Getting a little bit too close to the sun there. But those wings have been well and truly spread over the last few rounds anyway. Now, B-Dog, this is going to be an absolute blowout here. I see it happening. Just the one player left to make anything happen here. And what I wanted to say, White, is that even if you're like a very confident player a lot of the time, uh, you know you have this like a, a level of aggression, like this Zeldris level confidence. When you go up against a team like Turtle Troop and you are like an underdog, like it could be hard to treat the game the same way. I think it actually takes a large amount of mental fortitude to approach games like this in the same way as your collegiate games. But I'm seeing Okeanos here look like he owns the place. Absolutely. He's been two maps in a row now. The standout player, the top fragger in the server. Even on map one where they lost, he was far and away the top fragger in the server. Stepping up in such an incredible way. B Dog just relegated to this sad, sad save. Was waiting <laughs> just to see if someone was going to be able to shoot. That did not happen. This <laughs> trade with the rocket is. The desperation with which I want to make an old man joke about an old game there, but I have to beat the old allegations that you threw at me earlier, Mitch. <laughs> I have to beat them. You know, I, I, you might be fighting a losing battle, brother. I'm 28. All. That's not old. <laughs> I, I swear. Ask any Zuma. Chat, is 28 old? <laughs> I get to say this because I'm over the hill. I know what the answer is for me. Actually just casting from the retirement home right now. Nurse is on the way to bring you some jello after this. Yeah, the scones slap. They, they're pretty good. They bring him in at 10 a.m. Sponge bath also, pretty lit. <laughs> so we have Corey here with the judge just praying they walk at him. Praying. It's you know, quite, especially once you see like a adult try to clear a part of the map. Sometimes try and move in a re clear after the fact. Especially if you let the dog go. That did not happen there. That was uh, <clears throat> euthanized very quickly. Humanely. Corey here, though. Yeah, with all this action. Yeah, this guy's just going to get some work done. It's two and the I spike is loose. Me. Okay, a glimmer of hope for Turtle Troop. Silence, though. Being allowed to move up on that off angle. Found a great timing here. Turtle Troop getting a lot done with a weaker buy. And they will get themselves, at least their head above the rapidly rising water level. Five rounds for the defenders. It looked like Okeanos just didn't do the full check because he did turn. But it seems like he just didn't turn all the way. That allowed Corey to just get some free low in mail. But still, I'm far from being a believer. So far, we are leaps and bounds away from my belief to return here for Turtle Troop on split. Okay. We have that Viper Lurk wall over at B, the one I sort of referenced that Turtle Troop were without on their attacking half. If anything, it will keep an extra player there potentially, trying to make sure that that Astra doesn't get caught in like a 1v1. Playing on the wrong side of that wall could be devastating. There's Boombot C, very little. Just going over on A. Bit. It looks like yeah, Mike's not really trying to make much happen here at all. Oh, now they have the dog to clear up mail. They don't want to get shot in the side by a judge this time. 
They have a smoke down as well in heaven. You can see that place pretty deep towards the stairwell. And that's drawn so much attention from the defenders of Turtle oh, Troop. No Four person rotation. Adder to try and lock this site down. Cage triggered. All right, Adder's able to drop down and get extra info on their presence in heaven off the camera. B Dog as well, hoping to draw some fire. Wingman returns back to the coop here, but Adder anchored on that site. He's been everywhere. He was in heaven just a moment ago. Double cages up, gets back to safety, gets info off the camera. Now being a nuisance, hard to clear. Monty able to step up and do just that, though, making it a two versus two. But there is heaven control for these defenders. And Tegan Monty can't necessarily play together. Monty a bit of a one and done. I might be able to catch Silence as he makes his way out from heaven. They know he's there. The Seekers have given them the script. That was a flashing towards elbow for Turtle Troop. And Stella's able to bait Monty out into that fight. The one that T couldn't help with. Having to try and slip away from that gravity well here, but a double face here for Turtle Troop might be more than T can handle. They have a feeling of that too. Trying to turn it into 1v1s. That is a big ask, and Stella forces the issue with the shorty. Both of these living players able to get their ultimates ready to go for the following round too. So not too bad. And T, who had gotten his Seekers, expended them. A solid round win for Turtle Troop. Blin definitely had an opportunity to try and explode into the A site, but obviously they didn't know that four players had rotated off A to B. So there was a moment where they sort of slowed things down when they had heaven control. But to their detriment, it just allowed some of those Turtle Troop players, B-Dog, to rotate all the way back through screens, assist Adder on site. Just missed that timing window by a couple moments. And now the comeback is underway. We can only hope that it's not a fake one. Two rounds for Turtle Troop. They have almost 50% of what they gained in this game prior. Okeanos was hoping to really slip past that bomb buddy, but... He'll clear it out. And their presence in mid now, definitely noted by Turtle Troop. Stella has the option to make use of the Seekers. And from that spot, it would at least tell him if there's anyone in B main. But Lin are trending across the map, going to the weaker site. The camera there for Radar is only to see the ramp play. So he'll have to physically check into A main. And when that trip gets broken, the rotate from Turtle Troop is going to begin. Adder's playing passively. If he can even get one here, that would be massive. Cage triggered. Both the cyber cages go up, but mostly ignored. You hear the sound of Okeanos and Co passing through them. Grenade! Okay, T going to plant out in the open a little bit here. No, thinks better of it. Those uh, paint shells force him off that angle. Here comes the Astra Ultimate. Seek is also going to be deployed. Monty caught in ropes here on the wrong side of that wall. B-Dog, though, will have to check that periodically to make sure he doesn't get backstabbed. It's Adder plunging into the mix. They're not ready for him here on the site, but the Stinger favored there. Fatigue. Big dog. Oh. B-Dog, though, runs up on Spaz. Mike also going down. Just Monty and Okeanos now left to play. B-Dog had a thrash. Would it be required? But time may be too short for that. Okeanos brings the house down and takes us to match point. I don't uh, know how T was able to get some of those early kills with the Stinger. B-Dog almost brought it back. He had a nice wingman as well that went into vent earlier in the round. So he was able to spot out that flank, which made Turtle Troop realize, all right, time to just push into the site faster than that flank can come in. It looked like they should have been able to win that and get the kill on Teague. He really stepped it up there with that kill with the Stinger. That's the what? impact kill of the round, no doubt. Expending two ultimates from Turtle Troop. The Seekers and the Wall from the Astra are gone. Instant Thrash actually, wow, it's a mid-split. It feels like we're playing Ascend. I mean, that's that's like what a team would do to, you know, try and get some early kills and tiles running down mid, but they do it on split with the Thrash. That is sick. Yeah, it's, it's very, uh, we see it on Sunset as well, especially if your name is Crew. It looked beautiful from Turtle Troop. And I saw, you saw how to pull off the side there. He's like, oh, we play a 5v3 retake. That's fine. No real reason for Turtle Troop to lose this with a thrash, Wyatt. Spaz trying to get forward, trying to make a play to even the odds here. Teague doing the same, but beautiful oh, adder. So fast on those trades. And that's what we like to see here. Another round up for Turtle Troop. They're still quite a long way off this, but the economy for Blim. Definitely was unsettled over the last couple of rounds. 
The buy potential is still going to be there. They'll still be in a position to close out the game. But now Turtle Troop is still four players up. Can start to stabilize their own banks. And I respect that. The Sigma male grind set that you mentioned before, <laughs> Mitch. That's Even it. when the round is over, there's still aim training. Start small. In they are rolling incredible. out online business solutions to thousands of clients daily. <laughs> it's crazy. They already have lime green Lamborghinis that they park inside stadiums. And with that knowledge at hand, Blin forced to take the timeout. I mean, what 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 can you, what else can you do in the face of uh, such immeasurable willpower and grind set? <laughs> right there. These guys, are, they're, they're so deep into this. They're on they're on four X. Right? <laughs> they're not messing about. This is great for Matter though in this in this last yeah. moment though. Like, I, I do think that like, Total Troop have just taken a little too long to wake up, and now they're trying a couple of things. Like the you know the pop down mid was really nice. Blin have to find a way to sort of end this. I think with. It won't be a complete buy, I think, but they, they should have a couple of players that can buy guns for others. I think I saw a couple of them with like 3k at the end of that round. Yeah, they could force up into this if they want to do so. I do want to check in as well out of this timeout what ultimates we're going to have on the table here. Blin, though, still, I think a bit fortunate to get to 12. That round they won two rounds ago to get them there was really scary. I think the majority of the time in that exact situation, you know, if you were to replay it a hundred times, Turtle Troop win the majority, but not in this reality. And this one, Blin were able to get to 12. So they have the Viper's Pit. Teague is one away from getting his ultimate, the Seekers. Super fast push down A from Turtle Troop to control this side of the map, get the orb for Stellar. Blin only with two Vandals into this round. They're going to walk into the Cypher setup. You can see that B-Dog is rotated now as well because they're pushed out on A. Ada having to play from the, the low ground here probably because of that Viper wall. Couldn't be posted up in mid B-Dog. Okay, that's pretty nice. Teague forced away. We might have heard Mike just there. Smoke's about to go. And B-Dog chooses his time to exit gracefully. Now, though, pressure coming in from B-Main. Siling's going to be forced to play from behind the smoke there and finds one. Buys a bit of time. Keeps the numbers even, and eventually the cavalry arrives. The late reflank through B-Main. Works like a charm. Now, Mike has to get up into heaven to get that spike. That is a long walk. Spaz will have to try and swing this and can turn into a one versus one, but it's Siling's that he has to deal with. And there's another one for Turtle Troop. Economy here for Blin still being decimated. Turtle Troop are taking an extremely aggressive line on these defensive rounds. I mean, look at the map right now, where Corey and Stellar were at. They're just, they're where the attackers spawn at. And they, I mean, you know, Okeanos is just thinking, what the heck, how are they behind me right now? Didn't we split through mid? How are they in B main already shooting me in the back on this exec? But now that Blin have all their ultimates, we're going to see the actual round that they planned in that timeout. With these Seekers available. Spaz is caught immediately. The paranoia catches oh, nothing. The Dizzy as well. That's... Teague was just walking up there after getting hit by the Dizzy. I just don't know if they were ready for Corey to bite off even more of that fight. Okay. This was the last straw for the economy of Blin. Are we really looking at a two-gun save? A minute? With a minute 15 left in the round, I think? We are. Bruh. And Turtle Troop <laughs> and Turtle Troop should be hunting this. I mean, obviously, you don't want to throw guns away early. You want to run the clock out and then, you know, start trying to hunt maybe with these players that have about 4k. Silence can, you know, afford to go down here. Getting these yeah, is... guns out of the hands of Blin would be a nice little bonus out of this round. And I do really like this call from Turtle Troop. Okeanos able to at least win that engagement. But on a round out of a timeout, where you know that the opposing team has cooked up some big plan, and then you just send it at them to absolutely eviscerate whatever that plan was, it's just such a nice disruption, and it's such a confident call from Stellar. We were seeing this from Blin. Ten Frequently, left. especially when it came to like that way they fought for ramp. Uh, you know, we talked about like how Viper can make it a little bit harder to do that. 
But that wall's been going to be every round. There are a few teams that just like arbitrarily deploy the Lurk wall at B because they're hoping to keep a second player on that site and not just the Astra. Uh, okay, but Turtle Trivia, great like job there. Great little aggressive pop. They are coming up against five ultimates. Five. So, uh, you know, I don't know if this is the round to use them because, again, I don't think the money is great here for Blin, but uh, it might be worth combining those with the two rifles they have maintained to try and end the game here and now. This is the difficulty with trying to make a comeback a reality in Valorant when the team in the lead has 11 or 12 rounds. Eventually, they will have five ultimates. They will all press Q, and they should be winning that round pretty much every single time to close out the game. Okay, Okeanos gets across. Only having to pay a little bit of health in order to do so. And they do go up ramp here. Turtle Troop playing back. They're probably pretty afraid of the showstopper. For good reason. And the Guiding Light there confirms heavy presence for the attackers. Set up in heaven. This is going to get a little bit scary now. They've actually got Corey anchoring this A site, of all people. They've got the angles covered as well because of B Dog and screens. Here's that smoke. Oh, Kianos! Yeah, Corey knew he was basically priced into that one. Maybe if he's really slick, he could have satcheled away, but it probably would have caused him to get traded. Had it going down to where it was Sheriff, though. That's not ideal. And here's that Viper's Pit. Two of five ultimates used, and Blinner already had a player advantage. And they're going to try and follow this one into screens. Exactly where you are. And now, even more. Neural Theft is going to reveal Silence. Causes that to just be a trade, though. Mike in danger, but able to hold his own. And that will be that Attack sheer weight division. of ultimates used by Blin to take away this split map. Again, a map where we didn't exactly expect Turtle Troop to look that dominant. But it's got to be a good feeling. <laughs> Why do you hold it like that, Teague? <laughs> you have to. <laughs> oh, buddy. But great result here for this team. This is a collegiate team that has come up through promotion relegation. And they've taken down one of the very best teams in challenges. Turtle Troop are... The best, they were in our estimation the best team in Group B after that stage one. Fantastic result, Okeanos again. Two back-to-back -to -back top frag maps. This guy looks crazy. Turtle Troop just found the answer a little bit too late on their defensive side, and I don't think they committed to the win con that they had on attack. They tried to play too many of those kind of slow rounds that just drifted off into nowhere. And throughout the entire game, Blin were firmly in control. They understood how to deal with Turtle Troops comp on attack, just holding down the angles, locking down crossfires with each other, not allowing them to contact up for free space. It was really nicely played from them. And already, this is an impressive result for them. The, the team that won relegation, a collegiate team taking a map here already, really respectable. Yeah, absolutely. And we're getting maximum valor in today, folks. Six maps for you here in these two best of threes. We're going to go to a break and collect ourselves for the decider map in this series. It is an elimination game. Winner will advance here to the upper semis. So don't go too far. We'll be right back with some more Valorant challenges mid-season cup.